Powered by Alienware. From two players trying to pong a ball past each other to high score competitions in arcades and local LAN parties, video game competitions are as old as video games themselves. And as video games have advanced, so have our methods of competition. Now, we have a name for it, eSports. And today we're going to take you through the evolution of eSports from their humble beginnings as a hobby to where they are today as an international industry, and then look at where we could see it in the future. The origins of video game competition go back to arcades and pinball machines. Anyone who has ever gone for a high score in Space Invaders or put a stack of quarters on a Street Fighter cabinet have a hand in growing the concept of eSports. But by the 1990s, most players were starting to move out of arcades and into their home, making it much more difficult to have public competitions. And those playing games on PC found it especially difficult, with almost every game supporting only a single player per computer. The solution to the problem was to get multiple systems and link them together on a single computer. With this, the LAN party was born, and it became the permanent method of multiplayer for PC gamers. Doom, Quake, Warcraft, Age of Empires, Command and & Conquer, and a slew of other game franchises launched with LAN support and quickly became standard bearers for multiplayer PC play. Without the convenience of stable or widely supported online gaming, video game competitions were still limited to a small local group of people, mostly just groups of friends organizing meetups where they could. One of the first widely successful attempts at commercializing competitive games came from a Dallas stockbroker named Angel Manaz, who formed the Cyber Athlete Professional League, or CPL, in 1997. The CPL is one of the most influential pioneers in esports history, as it was able to bring in players consistently and attract enough sponsors to stay afloat for over 10 years. While the CPL was active, it gave out over $3 million in prizes. Today, esports has grown into a global phenomenon and an industry earning hundreds of millions of dollars a year. One of the earliest and best known esports success stories was the explosion of StarCraft in South Korea. The popularity of Blizzard's real-time strategy game drew a crowd of 100,000 spectators for the League Finals in 2004. It also helped spawn the world's first TV channel dedicated to esports on OGN. In 2005, OGN was the ninth highest rated channel in Korea and continues to run today. The explosive popularity of esports in South Korea has helped it gain acceptance in the rest of the world as well. In 2013, the United States accepted its first esports player on an athlete visa, Korean StarCraft II pro Kim Dong Hong. A second esports visa was issued just a month later. Esports in the past decade have grown all over the world. No longer are the venues limited to warehouses and basements and unused office space. Now we have the League of Legends Finals packing Madison Square Garden. The EVO 2016 fighting game tournament filled up the Mandalay Bay Events Center in Las Vegas while also getting coverage on ESPN2. Meanwhile, the Dota 2 International Prize Pool is on pace to top 21 million in 2016. That's seven times more than the CPL gave out in its 10 years of existence, and about 19 million more than what the Brazilian soccer team reportedly earned from their gold medal victory in the Rio games. In the early days of esports, these tournaments were basically sideshows. Now we have CSGO's E-League broadcasting regularly on TBS. Games like League of Legends, Dota 2, and Counter-Strike are certainly popular quality games, but their competitive scenes have pushed them from simply popular to household name status. Increasingly, new multiplayer games are being made with esports in mind. Blizzard's smash hit Overwatch is endlessly making balance changes to drive it into major esports territory. An indie darling Rocket League supported the esports scene from the start, crowning a season champion in its first year of existence with a $75,000 prize pool. If virtual reality takes off successfully, we may see grand finals in the future in which the screens are showing each other's point of view, not just the computer screen. Already, Valve is getting the ball rolling, experimenting with augmented reality for this year's Dota 2 international coverage. They've also added a VR spectator mode for Dota 2 with HTC Vive support. This sets the stage for a future in which spectators don't just attend these events, they're in them. Given the amount of money, interest, and global appeal generated by the competitive gaming industry, it isn't out of the question that we could even see Dota 2 or League of Legends in the Olympics in the very near future as multiple countries, including South Korea, are already contacting the IOC for information on getting competitive gaming recognized. 
No matter which way they grow, it's clear that esports are here to stay. What do you think the future holds for competitive gaming? What would you love to see in the next few years? Let us know down below in the comments. We look forward to many years of the best players in the world showing us what it means to enjoy the game. This video has been powered by Alienware. 20 years of gaming excellence.